The breakthrough deal to pause the brutal and bloody seven-week-old war in West Asia is scheduled to begin today. Absolutely, Shivan. And the first truce in the ongoing Israel-Hamas war reached after mediation by Qatar. It will facilitate the release of at least 50 hostages held by Hamas militants in exchange for at least 150 Palestinians who, who are jailed in Israel. Now, according to Qatar, the four-day ceasefire in Gaza between Israel and Hamas will begin today, a day later than originally announced as negotiators worked out final details of the deal. Qatari Foreign Ministry spokesperson announced the ceasefire will start at 7 a.m. local time. He said that the two sides had exchanged lists of those to be released and the first group of 13 women and children held by Hamas would be freed by Friday afternoon. Take a listen. We have just uh, finished with all the communication with all uh, parties in order to ascertain the lists of uh, those civilians who will be uh, freed as a result of the deal agreed upon by, uh, by both parties. The uh, lists have been handed to both sides and finally uh, in a communication just now the list has been handed to the uh, Israeli intelligence service, the, uh, the Mossad, in order to facilitate the implementation of, uh, of the deal. The, according to this, of course, and be, uh, as, uh, as the agreement uh, took place, uh, the beginning of the uh, pause will be 7 a.m. Friday, the 24th of November, and it will last, of course, as agreed for four uh, days. And uh, the first uh, patch of civilians to, uh, to be released from Gaza will be around 4 p.m. of the same day. They will be 13 in number, all women, and uh, children and uh, those hostages who are from the same families will be uh, put together within the same patch. Obviously, every day will include a number of, uh, of civilians as agreed to total 50 within the four uh, days. Although he did not say how many Palestinians jailed in Israel would be freed, but according to Israeli army radio, the first batch of 39 Palestinian prisoners will be released at about 1800 GMT and that this will only occur if the hostages held in Gaza are on Israeli soil. Well, the diplomatic breakthrough promised some relief for the 2.3 million Palestinians in Gaza who have endured weeks of Israeli bombings, as well as for the families in Israel fearful for the fate of the loved ones taken captive during Hamas's October 7th attack that triggered the war. As, uh, as we talked about, uh, this, uh, humanitarian aid is an integral part of, uh, of this deal. The aid will start going in within, of course, the calm period that uh, will start at, at, 7 PM, at 7 a.m. So we are expecting aid to go in as soon as possible from uh, Rafah uh, crossing. You know that the aid has been there, uh, you know, with, in coordination with the Egyptians and uh, all the international uh, donors. So it's going to be get, coming in through the, uh, uh, the crossing as soon as we have a period of calm where, of course, even the aid workers would be safe in, uh, in going in. The, it would be a fraction of the need in Gaza. The need is so great in Gaza that no matter how much aid you are going to bring in, there will be certainly uh, more need for, uh, for aid, but we are hoping to bring in as much as possible uh, within the confounds of, uh, of the deal. Egypt's President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi also praised the ceasefire agreement. The North African country, which often plays as peace broker between the warring sides, has pushed for a ceasefire since the conflict erupted on the 7th of October. <laughs> مع الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية والأشقاء القطريين في الوصول لاتفاق هدنة إنسانية لمدة أربع أيام قابلة للتمديد وآمل أن يبدأ تنفيذها في الأيام القادمة دون تأخير أو تسويف وهنا أنا بتكلم إن شاء الله نبدأ الكلام ده من بكرة صباح بكرة الجمعة إن شاء الله Meanwhile, the international humanitarian aid trucks were waiting to enter the Gaza Strip from Egypt ahead of this imminent truce between Israel and Hamas. The long line of trucks were parked up in El Arish are waiting for approval to head towards the Rafah crossing with Gaza. Our biggest challenge is that those trucks need to go through Rafah corridor. The challenge that 
the the number of trucks going are very limited we hope through actually uh, this uh, visit and with the help of our friends and colleagues from Egypt that and the international community to see more uh, pressure to allow more trucks Martin Griffiths has already mentioned that we need 400 trucks a day and I say the same we need to have 400 trucks pass through Rafah corridor a day Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu gathered his top security officials together late on Thursday for a meeting of the war cabinet. Now, the meeting came just hours ahead of a four-day ceasefire in Gaza. With war in West Asia continuing to make headlines across the globe, Israeli President Isaac Herzog met with the newly appointed UK Foreign Secretary as well, David Cameron, who was making his first visit to Israel since taking over the job. And Cameron also said that the humanitarian pause in the war was an opportunity to get aid into Gaza, further adding that the UK would help with that as well. Take a listen. We are waiting to see uh, some of them return according to the first phase of uh, what is seen as, um, as a possible deal between Israel and, uh, and Qatar, Qatar, United States and, and, and Hamas, so that uh, some of the humanitarian um, dilemmas that we are faced with when it comes to our hostages at least will be resolved when we see a three-year-old child walking alone with because she has no parents back home. Um, but the story is not over. We are at war. We are at war against one of the worst terrorist organizations in history. So of course all hostages must come out because hostage taking is, is immoral and wrong and a terrorist tactic. Um, and so, and some of them are British hostages, so we have a, a strong interest with you. But I think this humanitarian <laughs> pause is also an opportunity to get aid into Gaza. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez and Belgian Prime Minister Alexandre de Croo also visited southern Israeli communities attacked by Hamas militants. Sanchez, wearing a flak jacket, walked through debris and into a home that was burnt during the attack last month. Now, the two leaders also held a meeting with the director of the Civil Commission for the crimes committed by the militant group. Meanwhile, at the war front, the Israeli military released footage of a strike that it said killed a Hamas commander. The IDF said that the strike killed Amar Abu Jala, who is the commander of the Hamas naval forces in Khan Yunus. Now, according to reports, the Israeli airstrike in Khan Yunus killed at least four people. A severely wounded boy was among the injured brought to the city's Nasser hospital to be treated. While an airstrike in Nusairit refugee camp in central Gaza killed at least 12 people, including children. The dead bodies that were recovered have now been taken to the Al-Aqsa hospital there. فجأة ضربوا البيت على الأطفال على الصغار على كل على كل البيت دمروا يعني هذا هذا هو الاحتلال بقتل الصغار والأولاد والبزاء والأطفال هذول هم اللي بقاموا هذول اللي بحاربوا اللي في دورهم أمنين صغار أطفال أطفال فيه فوق الثلاثين طفل في الدار all right, viewers, for more on this, we are now being joined by Edward P. Joseph from New York. Edward is a conflict management expert with 15 years of field experience, as well as a foreign policy lecturer and analyst. Welcome to a World DNA, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, let's start off with this. Now, it's a hostage deal. I mean, a swap of prisoners on one hand, 
hostage release on the other. The stakes are high. It's a very volatile region and there is zero trust between the two sides. Of course, they are at war. Now, how does an exchange like this really take place? And the figures that have come in right now is that 13 hostages will be freed for 39 Palestinians. Now, how, do, how does it play out? Like, first the hostages need to make it to Israeli soil, then the prisoners will be released? Or how do they sort of make this happen? The answer in brief is very carefully. And we have to remember here that there, this deal has been put together with the help of extensive mediation. So yes, there's uh, no trust between Israel and Hamas, of course, no trust at all. But there is confidence uh, uh, in the Israeli side and in the Hamas side in the intermediaries. Uh, the U.S. has credited both uh, Qatar and Egypt in this, and there is uh, some confidence from each side in those intermediaries. And let's remember, those intermediaries, Qatar and Egypt, have an interest, as well as the United States, in this deal going through. So it's not just a question of the, the mutual lack of trust between Israel and Hamas. It's the fact that intermediaries themselves have put their own reputations at stake in this, and uh, let's also remember that, that this is uh, the relationship between Israel and Hamas. It does have experience the, the, of uh, hostages being released and of uh, deals being executed. So it's not as if there's no history whatsoever of, of deals being uh, affected uh, between the two sides. And in here, in, in this case, the hostages themselves, there will be a role for the International Committee of the Red Cross, actually, of uh, having a, a hands-on, on-the-ground role of escorting, apparently, these hostages that were criminally taken by Hamas, criminally held by Hamas. And you heard uh, what uh, Prime Min uh, Foreign Minister Cameron of the UK said about this, about hostage taking. He said it was a terrorist tactic. And ICRC will be uh, there on the ground, apparently, in a role of, of escorting and bringing these hostages from Gaza to Israeli territory. So that's, uh, again, an additional confidence builder. But you're right, it's very delicate. There are obligations that Israel has to meet in this uh, with respect to the pause, the humanitarian pause or ceasefire, and also with respect to overflights. So it, it, there are elements that still have to be uh, incorporated so for there, to achieve zero this trust between the two sides, pause. but they need to trust the the people who have made this happen and the nations which have come in between. Right, Mr. Joseph, apart from uh, the obligation that Israel has to meet, Israel has clearly said that it intends to continue attacking Hamas militants even after the truce. Hamas also intends to intensify the fight on all the fronts. My question to you is that how do you think Israel will actually strike a balance between bringing hostages and also destroying Hamas, which is its ultimate aim? Well, uh, I'll get to that question in a second, but let's first uh, anticipate what we hope will be this pause, desperately needed pause for Palestinian civilians who uh, have been battered uh, since uh, actually Hamas launched this war on October 7th. But uh, Palestinian civilians desperately need this respite from Israeli bombardment, and we must hope that that is the case. And we also hope that these Israeli parents and relatives for those ch uh, children, as mentioned, who do no, no longer have parents, uh, thanks to killings by uh, terrorists from Hamas, that they also, these families of hostages and Israelis in general, get relief from the release of these hostages. Now, coming to your question, mm -hmm. look, the, the way forward here, it doesn't necessarily have to go back to war, not in, not in any sense of the term. Mm -hmm. As part of this deal, the, the understanding that this has been stated from the Israeli side is a concept of more for more. So we have this initial four-day desperately needed pause, again, for Palestinian civilians who also will receive mm -hmm. desperately needed humanitarian relief mm -hmm. there in Gaza, and those Palestinian civilians need that. Uh, and uh, there's the provision of more for more. That is one additional day of this ceasefire, mm -hmm or pause for each 10 Israeli hostages that are released. So what does that mean? It means very simply, it's up to Hamas to choose its priorities. 
That's what this means. It means that uh, as this four-day pause, which should come into effect uh, very, very soon, mm -hmm. Uh, and again, desperately needed for those Palestinian civilians, it's up to Hamas to choose whether it prioritizes the welfare of Palestinian civilians by continuing this respite from Israeli bombardment by releasing 10 more hostages. Mm -hmm. Again, here, the entire war itself could end if Hamas would release all the hostages and if its leadership would depart. Mr. That, Joseph. as uh, Israeli yes, officials I, have stated this, please. Yes, I just want to come in there very quickly with one more question, sir. Uh, now, how do you think Hamas is going to play this? Uh, now, I just want to quote here, the U.S. President Joe Biden said that he hoped that a three-year-old American girl would be among those released in the first batch of hostages which are sent out. Is there some kind of hostage value that Hamas is placing on the hostages that it has? Is it placing high-value hostages as opposed to other hostages depending on which nationality they are? How do you think they would be evaluating which hostages to release first? Do you think that would be a process in their minds? Uh Obviously, it will be. Your your question is is a good one, and obviously there is a calculation on on Hamas about the the hostages and relative value for President Biden. You are absolutely correct. President Biden has a priority to ensure uh, that Americans who are being held by uh, Hamas are released. And you heard again, Foreign Minister Cameron, former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, also mentioned that there are British citizens among those hostages, among other nationalities. You have to remember that Hamas uh, criminally and its associates criminally grabbed uh, uh, even individuals from countries like Thailand that have nothing whatsoever to do with this conflict. And that should say a lot to your viewers about the nature of Hamas, which even Bernie Sanders, who has called for an end to the Israeli bombardment, he, Bernie Sanders, calls Hamas a terrorist organization and has no hesitation in doing so. So we have to remember who we are dealing with, who the Israelis, the United States, the Qataris, and the Egyptians are dealing with in Gaza. And it's, it remains very difficult. And as I said at the beginning, as this desperately needed pause takes place, it will be up to Hamas to decide if it prioritizes Palestinian civilians by continuing to release uh, Israeli hostages and continuing this desperately needed respite from bombardment. Please. Always a pleasure speaking with you, sir and getting from your experience in the field as well. We will definitely be in touch for more details as this uh, you know, continues further. This is, of course, one of the first deals that has happened, hoping the hostages make it back at the earliest. Thank you so much for joining us. That was Edward B. Joseph joining us from New York. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you very much.